so I'm working on this talk for Free Flow this weekend, this talk about the history of the Christian video game industry. Incidentally, I think tickets are still available. Check the show notes for a link. Anyway, so I'm prepping this talk. And the way I go about it at first is I start off by writing out a list of all the games that I want to highlight, all the historical anecdotes I wanted to mention, and all the various points that I want to make. Then I strung them together in you know, a more or less chronological order, and I talked my way through a rough draft of the speech. And it was almost twice as long as the speech I'm supposed to give. The, the talk at the conference is 45 minutes. The talk I had was like an hour and 20-something. Now, that's a good problem to have, right? It, it means only the very best stuff makes it into the final version of the talk. But inevitably, when you're trying to carve that much stuff out, something you really like ends up on the cutting room floor. And in this instance, it was actually the conclusion that I wanted to build the whole thing towards. See, throughout the talk, I'm pointing out the ridiculous animosity that Christians have and have had towards video games since their very inception. And as I point out in the talk, video games were born with a bad reputation thanks to Christian prudery. And the goal was eventually to build all of that towards the question of why. Why do Christians have it out for video games in the first place? Ultimately, though, that took me on this like huge, long diversion, and I had to opt for a different conclusion. But luckily, I have another venue to address that question, namely this diatribe. So here we go. Why do Christians have it out for video games? Well, now, obviously, part of the answer is just the obvious shit, right? Christians hate video games because Christians hate everything. They even use the universally applicable phrase of the world to describe the things that they hate. So to some degree, they hate video games for the same reason that they hate movies and televisions and songs and every other form of popular entertainment. Popular entertainment is a mirror. It's reflecting back a culture, and that's a culture where they're less and less significant. They don't want to gaze into that. And they sure as hell don't want their kids to gaze into it. But I would argue that with video games, it's more. Because video games represent direct competition to religion in a way that no other form of mass entertainment does. Because to a greater degree than with, like any other form of storytelling, video games are told in the second person. Not I, not she, but you. Sure, you might be playing as Mario or as Link or as Master Chief, but you're them in a way that isn't true when you're relating to a movie's hero or a novel's protagonist. You're making the decisions. You're succeeding or failing. You're figuring out the solutions to the puzzle. And increasingly, you're making the moral choices. I mean, we, we can talk about it theoretically all day, but a video game can actually put you there at the lever, show you a trolley coming down the tracks and let you count the people on each side. Like, for example, you might find yourself in a spot in a game where you're leading a party and two members of it are in danger. But the game only gives you a chance to save one of them. One of them's going to die. Now, now, one of them is a person with impeccable morals that hasn't actually contributed a whole hell of a lot to the dungeon storming. And the other one is a piece of fucking shit that steals from innocent people, but is really handy in a fight. Who do you save? Do you make the moral decision or do you make the expedient one and decide quick, damn it, or both of them are going to die? Now, to be fair, most video games that try to do this kind of shit fail miserably. Video game narrative is an art form that still in many ways is in its infancy, but, but it's getting better. It's more and more common to have video games where your moral decisions affect the way the game unfolds in real and meaningful ways. And, and it's more and more common for talented writers to coax an emotional connection out of you to an NPC. And as everybody who's getting emotionally devastated by every new episode of HBO's Last of Us series is slowly learning, at its highest level, video game narrative is getting really fucking good. But it doesn't matter, right? Video games didn't have to reach some kind of lofty plateau to get better at this shit than religion is. Religions largely justify their existence by claiming that they help people be moral or, or learn a good ethical framework. Now, given how moral they aren't, that claim shouldn't have much weight. But for some reason, it does. For some reason, most people are willing to accept that just because religion failed to produce a moral person for the 80 trillionth time in a row doesn't mean it's, gonna, it's a problem with the religion, right? Those 80 trillion were just doing it wrong. But how the hell long can that hold up when there's a genuine, measurable alternative sitting in the living room of every home? How good do the morality engines of games have to get before it's obvious, even to the average churchgoer, that the games are doing a better job teaching their kids right from wrong than the youth pastor? Now, I don't know the answer to that question, of course, but I know that the youth pastor doesn't want anyone to find out.